Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Caden Cobb and I'm one of the six graduating high school seniors that will be recognized during worship this week. Four of us have agreed to be worship leaders during the service. We will each introduce ourselves before leading our part of worship. As I said, my name is Caden. I'll be graduating from Salina Central High School and in the fall I'll be attending Missouri Western State University to play basketball and major in biology with a pre-dental emphasis. You can download a bulletin for today's worship service at fpcsalina.org. Worship is airing live on KINA Radio at 9.10 a.m., 107.5 FM, and online. It is also streamed on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Kansas. You will also be able to watch the video later on on our Facebook and YouTube pages. I invite you to join me in the responsive call to worship. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. We long for abiding peace and friendship that renews our souls. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. We seek wisdom that endures and guidance for our journey. Jesus says, where I am, there may you be also. We come to encounter Christ. Let us worship our God. Miles Denning. I'm a graduating senior from Salina Central High School, and this fall I'll be attending Kansas State Polytechnic University to major in professional piloting. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another using the unison prayer of confession. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice towards our enemies, we have been deceitful in our relationships, and we have been insincere in our commitments. 
Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children long for your pure spiritual milk that we may grow into the joy of salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. Siblings, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. celebrate. We have um, graduation Sunday, which though it is a very different graduation Sunday than we've had in years past, we are so excited for all of our graduates who have met such a wonderful accomplishment in their life. And in addition to that, it's also Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of the women out there who, whether they are a mom to a child or a teacher that is a mom to many at the school, or they are just a lover of all children in the world, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. So today, it made me think, let's talk about my favorite word ever, which is love. So I saw this idea somewhere, and what I have here is a piece of paper. So I want this to symbolize love, right? And so each of the four corners are um, even like a higher symbol of love, I suppose. So let's count how many corners this piece of paper has. Ready? So one, two, three, four, right? Okay, but kind of like love, sometimes you can do this. And you can cut a little corner off. And now you have even more corners of love. Watch this. I'm trying to get it in the camera right. So you have one, two, three, four, five. So we went from four to five. Okay. Let's do this again here. It's kind of hard with a microphone in my hand too. Okay. So ready? Here we go again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. And if you guys could see the floor right now, there's a few of these little floating around, right? So I could go out, and if you were here, I'd pass those out to you guys saying that I'm sharing my love with you. But let's imagine that I kept going with this, and I just kept cutting and cutting. You're going to get even more and more corners of love, right? And there's even more love that's fallen on the floor that could be passed around. And if I kept cutting this piece of paper, eventually it could almost turn into probably a circle, right? And a circle has no ends. So it just keeps going and going and going. And what I love about that is that that's what love is too. And love is all around us. And you know, all of these corners, we have people that love us at. Our moms, our dads and many other people in the world that are supporting us. So during this time of uncertainty and confusion, let us all remember that at the end of the day, the biggest thing that we need to think about is love. And God's love for us is never ending and always continues. And let us go out into the world and let us share our love that we have to give. 
with our graduates, with our moms, and with all of the world. So my goal for you guys today is to go out and find ways to spread joy and to spread love and to show people that you care. Because at the end of the day, that's what keeps the world going. So let us all bow our heads and say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your endless love and for the love that keeps going and going. And even when we maybe sometimes don't love ourselves, you always show us love. Let us be those who go out into the world and show others love as well. And all God's children said, amen. I'm Evan Bishop. I'm graduating from Salina Central, and I will be attending Baker University, majoring in engineering and playing football. Please pray with me, Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of your spirit, call us out of darkness, and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm chapter 31, verse 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My time are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of the, my enemies and prosecutors. Let your face shine upon your servants. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Hi, I'm Molly Michaelis. I'm graduating from Salina Central High School, and this fall I'll be going to Chapman University in Orange, California to pursue a degree in Integrated Educational Studies. Our second scripture reading is 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, help us to accept the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Direct our eyes, ears, minds, and hearts that we might better see, hear, understand, and feel your will for us. And direct our mouths, hands, feet, and hearts that our words, actions, and relationships might reflect your will for us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm grateful for our seniors that have sent in photographs and information about their future plans and, and for those that have helped to lead us in worship this morning as it is graduation Sunday. Like many other events that our graduating seniors were looking forward to this year, graduation Sunday at church isn't exactly like what we had expected. And isn't that true for many of us in this time of COVID-19? Life changed seemingly overnight, and we're all yearning for a sense of normalcy. And we especially want to be able to celebrate with folks during birthdays and anniversaries and graduations and the like. But beyond just the ceremony of this time, our graduating high school seniors are preparing to embark on a journey to discover their life beyond high school. And this, like all times of transition in life, is a stressful time alone as it is. Our seniors are not alone right now in facing times of transition and upheaval during a global pandemic. We have many in our own congregation, in our community, and in our families who now find themselves underemployed, who are suffering from significant illnesses that affect their physical and mental and emotional well-being, and those who are experiencing grief in many different ways. For those of us facing these times, we're in the midst of a sort of punctuation of our lives. There will be the time before and there will be the time after in our life story. For those of us who are not in a time like that, COVID-19 has limited our abilities to express care and in, in some cases consolation for our siblings in Christ going through these transitions. All of us going through this right now are seeking stability in the midst of the turbulence that we are experiencing, we desire a solid foundation that will support us. This, this foundation will hold us up during this time. And that foundation is always there, and it has always been there. There is one who knows us better than we know ourselves. One who in times of turmoil says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you as written in Isaiah. One who desires to gather each of us as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, as written in Matthew. Yes, on this Mother's Day, we remember our heavenly parent who formed our inward parts and knit us together in our mother's wombs. At the foundation of our lives is the assurance that we are beloved children of God, each of us. And that through Jesus Christ, nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. 
In Psalm 31, which Evan read for us, we hear the writer's trust that God's love would provide safety and deliverance from shame. All of us have felt shame at some point in our lives. However, I believe it to be especially powerful for those of us that are younger, going through adolescence and early adult years as well. It's in this time that we are developing and testing our inward and our outward identities. It's important to remember that shame is different from guilt. When we feel guilty about something, we feel bad about our actions, something that we've done. But when we feel shame, we feel bad about who we are, our very identities. And unfortunately, there are many people who want to use the power of shame to push people down. We don't know what it, is, what it was about the psalmist's circumstances that made them fearful of shame, but we do get to see the defense that the psalmist uses. The psalmist retreats to the foundation of God's refuge and love. God is a rock of refuge for the psalmist, a strong fortress. In verse 5, the psalmist says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Think about those words. Into your hand I commit my spirit. The psalmist who is seeking refuge and protection from shame finds rest by placing his or her spirit, their very essence, in God's hand. To add credibility to the power of God's love over shame, let us remember that it is this verse that Jesus quotes while on the cross. The cross was a form of public execution that was especially shameful. Jesus counters that shame by saying, into your hand I commend my spirit. Then God erases any doubt about the power of shame over love when Jesus is raised from the dead on Easter morning, defeating death and shame's power once and for all. We remember that victory as we gather to worship and give thanks on this fifth Sunday of the Easter season. When any of us feel tempted to let shame rob us of our core identity, may we remember this verse and know that God is holding us in God's hand because we are God's beloved child. And as if we needed another memorable saying for a time of transition in life, the psalmist provides yet again in verses 15 and 16. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Commentator Jeff Paschal shares these words. This is not a claim that God causes or controls every single event in life, but the psalmist does trust that in every moment of life, from disappointment to success, from sorrow to joy, from birth to death, God mysteriously, powerfully, and finally holds the psalmist's life and times. My friends, I hope we find solace in these verses, and perhaps we will commit them to memory for future use too. Our times are in God's hands, and God's face is shining upon us with steadfast love. The core of who we are, the bedrock and foundation of our lives in all times is God's love. We are beloved children of God. And we are reminded again of the power of this foundation in our first Peter scripture, which Molly read for us. First Peter was a letter of encouragement and instruction that circulated among churches in the five areas of Asia Minor, which is now modern day Turkey, in the last part of the first century of the common era. Christianity at the time was a minority religion that was despised by the ruling Roman Empire who expected such foreign religions to upset the status quo and the hierarchical power structure. Even family members of people who became Christians often responded very negatively. Can you imagine the shame and the fear that were felt by these early Christians? This letter was not meant only to reinforce the foundations of their faiths, but to help them to build upon that foundation even in those difficult times. And that's where we can connect with the original audience of this letter because we are in difficult times too. 
the scripture begins with another maternal image of God, stating, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. These words remind us of Jesus' words in Matthew 18, 3, where he says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We are reminded in this verse that we can do nothing to earn God's love, but instead must be fully reliant upon the grace of God found through Jesus Christ. Like little children are fully reliant upon their parents for their lives. God's love is a bottomless reservoir that never dries up. And the spiritual milk in 1 Peter 2, 2 is God's love and God's word. Through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us, God turns this spiritual milk into energy for our lives and strengthens our bones so that we can grow stronger. This verse is a reminder that we are never to stop growing in our faith. We should long for this spiritual milk, whether we are newborn or a nonagenarian. It reminds us that we are God's beloved child, and then we are challenged to build upon this identity. In 1 Peter 2, verse 5, we are challenged to let ourselves be like living stones, to be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are living stones who come to Jesus, the chief cornerstone that Marianne and Britain sang about in our anthem. Jesus tells us that the spiritual sacrifice is acceptable to God include loving God with our whole hearts, minds, souls, and strength, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. And as Jesus says in John 13, that we are to love one another as he has loved us, for that is the mark of discipleship. This is how we grow into our salvation. We respond to the free gift of God's love by sharing God's love. We share that spiritual milk with others. In conclusion, remember who you are. You are a beloved child of God. Remember in whose spirit, remember in whose hand your spirit rests and your time rests. Remember that God has named you a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, God's own. You are God's beloved. That's your foundation. When everything around you is changing, when you can't recognize parts of your life, when pain is chipping away at you, find peace and rest in that foundation. It is your sure footing to protect you in the storms that you face. Nothing and no one can ever take God's love from you. And don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. But by the same token, you can share God's love with others and know that it does not deplete God's love for you. God's love is not a zero-sum game. It is infinite. And sharing it with others does not deplete it from you. In fact, it does the opposite. It makes you grow into your salvation, as verse 2 says of 1 Peter 2. Many of us are facing times of transition and pain right now. I hope these words bring you added comfort, strength, guidance, peace, and a call. For our high school seniors, you will go forward to build the next story in your life. The previous years of schooling that you've had and those who have supported you other, over those times will be there for you to build upon when it comes time to develop new skills and experiences and gifts for you to share with others. Let us know how we can support you. For those suffering from underemployment, there will come a time when you can rebuild or renovate those parts of your life too. Let us know how we can support you. For those who are facing physical, mental, or emotional illness, we pray for your recovery and for the time when you can repair those parts of yourself. Let us know how we can support you. And for those who grieve, we acknowledge that there is a hole in your life now and that causes great pain. But have faith and hope in the eternal life that Christ provides. Hold fast to the memories that you have of those that you've lost and be kind to yourself. Let us know how we can support you. 
For those of us who are able to do so, one way that we can love our neighbors as ourselves or love as Christ has loved us is to provide support and care for those going through transitions in their lives, along with those who are caregivers for the sick and the grieving. When I was saying, let us know how we can support you, I was including each of you hearing my voice in that statement. God calls us to love one another. What unique skills or experiences or gifts do you have that can help you to answer that call to love one another? Especially those going through transitions in life. As we all seek to build together, let us remember that we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. As we build on the foundation of God's love, with our lives as living stones joined with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone, and the nourishing spiritual milk of the Holy Spirit holding us all together, remember that there is nothing that can knock this house down. We are the church, the body of Christ. Even when we can't all be in this sanctuary together, COVID-19 does not have the last word on that. Moving away after graduating, does not have the last word on that. Let's be the church in this time and in all times, for the reservoir of God's love is deep, and we all yearn to be sustained by it. In the name of the Creator, and the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Having heard God's word read and proclaimed, I invite you to join with me in our affirmation of faith, which this morning is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and sitteth in the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of affirmation is How Firm a Foundation.
come now to a time of prayer for God's people. Please lift up in your hearts and your prayers this day the Cram family, Jim and Becky, at the death of their son, Scott. We pray continued God's mercies and blessings upon the Lampers family, Ruth, as she deals with Harold's death, and a point of great celebration in the family of this body of Christ. John and Helen Smuts will celebrate their 74th wedding anniversary this Tuesday. Please join me in prayer. God of all kindness, you gave your only son because you loved the world so much. We pray for the peace of the world. Move among us by your spirit. Break down barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred. Heal the human family of its divisions and unite it in the bonds of justice and peace. We pray for our country. We pray that you would enrich our common life, strengthen the forces of truth and goodness, teach us to share prosperity, that those whose lives are impoverished may, pa may pass from need and despair to dignity and joy. We pray for those who suffer. Surround them with your love. Support them with your strength. Console them with your comfort and give them hope and courage even beyond themselves. We pray for our families and for those whom we love, especially mothers this day. Protect them at home. Support them in times of difficulty and anxiety that they may grow together in mutual love and understanding and rest content in one another. We pray for the church. Keep us true to the gospel. Keep us responsive to the gifts and needs of all. And make known your saving power in Jesus Christ by the witness of our faith, our worship, and our very lives. With thanksgiving, we remember, we remember before you those saints who bore witness to the light. We pray that you would per, grant that we may persevere in the faith to which we have been called, and at the end, we might behold your glory. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers this day. Fulfill our hopes in all things for which we pray. Give us the will to seek to bring them about. For this we pray for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we pray using words that Jesus taught to his disciples and to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This day is a great day of celebration not only for our seniors, but in the life of First Presbyterian Church of Salina. We honor our graduating high school seniors this day. We also honor mothers on this Mother's Day. We particularly honor the 160th anniversary of our church's founding. Let's spend a few moments on all these causes for celebration. First, we have a video honoring our graduating high school seniors. This video will be posted on our Facebook page so that you can view it again later. Let's take a look. Thank you. 
This Tuesday marks the 160th birthday of our church. On May 12, 1860, the first Presbyterian Church of Salina was organized by the Reverend A.T. Rankin and the Reverend William Bishop. Reverend Rankin and Reverend Bishop, among others, came on a buggy from Lawrence over to Salina to found our church, the first church founded in Salina in honor of our church's birthday and to celebrate mothers and those who have played motherly roles in our lives today, we honor Mrs. Christina Phillips. This is a photo of Mrs. Phillips, who is affectionately known as Grandmother Phillips or Grandma Phillips by those who attended her Sunday school class, the first in Salina. A Scotch Presbyterian widow, Christina Phillips was the mother of Colonel William Phillips who founded Salina. Between four to six children attended the Sunday school class that she held in her home, which was located on the southwest corner of Santa Fe and Iron Avenues, where the current UMB Bank building resides. As we celebrate all of the mothers and those who have been like mothers in our lives, we also celebrate and give thanks for the faithfulness of one of the mothers of this church, Mrs. Christina Phillips. Roughly 100 years ago, T.D. Fitzpatrick wrote a history of First Presbyterian Church as the current church building was being planned. He concluded his article by saying, as our congregation in the past has overcome every obstacle, we, sh we feel assured with respect to the current undertaking that if any hardships appear, if any strenuous obstacle arises in the way, that with splendid courage and great devotion, our people will go forward and will finish the splendid edifice that is here begun. Today, our church and our community face hardships and strenuous obstacles in the face of COVID-19. We're called to follow in our forebears' footsteps to go forward with splendid courage and great devotion. One way we can do that is through supporting Project Salina, which is underway this month. Project Salina allows us to partner with other organizations and businesses in the city to fight hunger, to be safe in this time of social distancing. Project Salina is asking for monetary donations only in 2020. They'll use these donations to purchase food to distribute to Ashby House, the Salina Emergency Aid Food Bank, the Salina Rescue Mission, DVAC, and the Salina Salvation Army. This is a wonderful way to help those in need in our city, and there are many more folks who are hungry now due to the effects of COVID-19. To encourage your donations, our church's social, mission, social Justice and Mission Committee is matching donations made through the church in the month of May. The committee is pledging up to $1,500 from its annual budget to amplify the impact that Project Salina will have in this great time of need. To donate, visit our website, fpcsalina.org, and click on the Giving tab, or you can mail your donation to the church. Please make out the payment to First Presbyterian Church with Project Salina clearly indicated on your payment, and then mail it to P.O. Box 585, 585, Salina, Kansas, 67402. We invite you to further support the ministry of First Presbyterian Church. There are four ways that you can do this. For those of you watching our video stream, they're appearing on the screen now. For those of you listening on KINA, I'll read them for you. You can mail your donation to P.O. Box 585, Salina, Kansas, 67402. Again, that's P.O. Box 585, Salina, Kansas, 67402. You can also give on our website, fpcsalina.org, on the Give tag. That's fpcsalina.org on the Give tab. You can text your offering as well. Simply text the word GIVE or a dollar amount to 785-329-9830. Again, you can text the word GIVE or a dollar amount to 785-329-9830. Finally, you can also download the Church by Ministry One app and search for us there. Again, the app is called Church by Ministry One, all one word, Ministry One, where Ministry One is one word. As people of God, then, let us offer ourselves and the fruit of our labor for God's work to the world.
Almighty God, receive the gifts we bring in gratitude for your astounding goodness. Make our lives to be an acceptable offering in unison with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is, Wash, O God, Your Sons and Daughters. graduating seniors, and indeed, may all of us never forget that we are God's beloved children. That never changes. Shame cannot change our identities as God's beloved children, and nor can times of transition. And may we go forth on our journeys of discipleship, nourished by the spiritual milk of God's love, so that we can grow and mature more each day in our, our journey of discipleship. And as we go, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>